Hi guys, Neil Tappin here from Golf Monthly and welcome to the first video in a new series with European Tour star Andy Sullivan. We're going to be finding out how Andy manages his game week in, week out on the European Tour, how he handles pressure, how he practices to prepare himself for the challenge of shooting the lowest scores he possibly can. Guys, if you're new to the Golf Monthly channel, please do hit the subscribe button to make sure that you don't miss any of our videos. If you like what you're watching, uh, hit the like button and leave comments below. We'd be really interested to hear your thoughts. But let's head out now onto the golf course here at Stratford-upon-Avon, Andy's home club, to find out what advice he's got to offer. Okay, so first tee, Andy, Stratford upon Avon Golf Club. I've never been, actually, that's not true. I did, I played a few holes last night. Sneaky. Yeah, but this is your, <laughs> this is your home club though. Yep. Right, so tell us a bit about the golf course. What can we expect? Um, you know, it's, it's a very short, pleasant parkland. Greens are, you know, normally really, really quick, very flat, but, um, you know, it's a great little members course where you just, for me, the biggest thing around it, if you get it in play off the tee, you're probably gonna, you know, makes things a lot, lot easier, you know, getting it in the fairway. What, so. what would your handicap be here, if you were an amateur? Um, I have three. No, I'm joking. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> um, probably, I don't know. When I play in the boys, I play... Don't be play, modest. Play, no, no, when I play with the boys, I have to play plus six. Plus six. So. Right, so you are... We've already discussed this. We're going to play uh, six holes, so two holes in each video, and you're going to give me a shot hole apart from the par threes. Apart from the par threes. Yeah, my yeah. handicap is five. So, so really, I'm giving him all his shots in them six holes, effectively. So what he's trying to say is... He's just swindling it, basically. Yeah, I'm doing my best. Yeah. I'm doing my best. Although you're not bad at golf, and I'm going to. I'm also caddying you around. You're caddying well. me around, and I'm also going to be quizzing you about how That's you do why it. That's why he's got the four shots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, go on, champ. You take it away. Um, uh, okay. Lead us away. So, what? You, well, and he's, what shape are you hitting off the tee? Uh, what, generally, probably you... tend to be a draw. Okay. Tend to be. A so draw. here, so for <laughs> me here is like the left side is probably better because that that right bunker you could get into it. So for me. If you're going to hit something, it'd be towards the flag, just drawing towards that tree on the left. <laughs> Sounds easy. What, what, Sounds easy. What, that's, that's the what problem. Caddy does, isn't it? <laughs> All right then. Do you want on. me to go first? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Gee, I'm a little fader with the ball, so I'll be starting this down the left side and just getting it back towards the uh, flag. Thank you, Oak. Oh, that's not where you want to be, though, Tamps. Oh, didn't move. Well, yeah, that could be one down, boys. Just saying. <laughs> well, I haven't even hit a ball yet. No, well, I'm pretty confident that's not in a good spot, that one. OK, well. Oh, I'm feeling really quite nervous. I was feeling fine <laughs> a minute ago. <laughs> just, I've, t I've told you the shot, just play it now. OK. Absolutely, just by the way, it's not Van Gogh that, it's just literally painted the picture. Yes, I think we'll finish it there, let's go in. <laughs> Absolutely flushed it. So, so first thing I wanted to ask you is how do you handle nerves? I mean, do you ever get nervous? I yeah. suppose you just do it week in, week out now, so it can't be that nerve wracking for yeah, you. Yeah, but... no, I mean, I, I, like, I, I like the feeling of being nervous because it just, for me, if you didn't get that, you know, it wouldn't matter to you, it wouldn't be as important. So. For me, being nervous, it's just like, for me, it's like a sign that I'm ready to play. And right, and so, so, so in that situation, right, I absolutely no qualms about it. I was bricking myself there. <laughs> <laughs> um, when, when, you, when you're in that, you're in that situation, you are feeling a bit edgy. What, what's the sort of things that you do that help? For me, just like you said there, you've got to, in your mind, you've got to paint that picture. You know, it's no good going into shot and being nervous and not have a clue what you're doing. Like there, I'd be like, right, I know what to do. Right. I'm just going to start it there and hit a little cut off the off of the thing. Your your instance, start at the flag and hit a little draw. You know, that's where, you know, having a clear picture in your mind under pressure and and things 
you've not indecisive. You know what you're going to try and do then. Yeah. So that yeah. almost takes the nerves out of it then, because right. you know what you've got to do. Right. Okay. It's when you have like indecisive. I'm not sure what to do. Like I don't know if I'm going to draw it or fade it. So. Yeah. Or I'm just going to somehow try to hit up there. Somehow exactly. And, yeah. yeah. Instead of Which, just having it, that clear picture in your mind, when you do get in that, if you're going to be, or you want to aspire to be good. You've got to initially start seeing them shots to, to yes. get to that point anyway. Yes. Because it's no good you just going, oh, I'm just going to hit it up there somewhere. And, and, you know, that's just, you know, so vague. I, I'd say if I was anyone who was under pressure, I'd be so pacific with everything down to the last little bit. Yeah. Where I'd be like, okay, well, I'm going to do this and that and the other. Then you've got a clear picture in your mind. Right. And this okay. is hell. This is easy. This is easy. Well, I reckon I've got about a hundred yards here, and I've got a four iron, which tells you all you need to know, really. I'm, uh, I'm well you know, and truly. I'm behind the eight ball already. Here. <laughs> You're in the middle of the fairway with a shot. With a shot. I'm in the trees. Well pointed out. With without a shot. With not much going on here, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna literally gonna just try and hit a Hollywood shot, which is just trying to hit this low little bunter here. Uh, underneath that tree and just try and get something running up near the green to put you under a bit of pressure. Go on then, go on then. <sighs> Come on, Seve. It is very seve yes, this one, I think. If this comes off, just not confident of keeping it low for that long. Oh! Oh, it's gone in. <laughs> Where's it gone? I'll, I'll tell you where it's gone. In the pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Right, I don't mind saying this is the sort of scenario I hate. Right, so <laughs> I've got a muddy lie. Right, yeah. uh, it's it's a shot of what, 35, 40 yards. Oh, oh, oh I will tell you. I, yeah. don't, I mean, it's not far, but again, here, what I'd be saying to you is, you know, you know, you've got a shot. So he's 50 yards. It's probably probably 40 yards to the top of that slope. Yeah. I mean, off a tight lie like that, I'd just be saying to myself, right, let's just. I'd be pitching like a pitching wedge or a nine iron. Just in that first sort of five yards of the fairway, just short of okay. green there, and run it up. You could go for the lobber and try and spin it in, but you just said you're not comfortable. Alarm with bells. That. Yeah, exactly. A, a yeah, massively just, dinging yeah, exactly. in my head here. So, I mean, that percentage, you're going to get it onto 20 feet and you're going to give yourself a putt for birdie. So, that would be the shot that I'd say to you that would be to play. Right, okay. All right. So, just, I mean, the thing is, though, you've got such a big margin for error. Because it's got an upslope there. If you over pitch it, it's probably going to land a bit softer. If you under pitch it, it's probably just going to run up it. So yeah. you've got a big margin for error in terms of where you can land it. No pressure or anything <laughs> like it's probably, you know, only the easiest shot in golf, this. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Just do what I was saying on the instruct. Just get the toe in the ground a little bit more. Okay. Just guarantee the strike. And all you're trying to do is just pitch it. See this line here? This yeah. line of irrigation. Yeah. Right? But between there and the, and the fringe there. In okay. The, in, in between them two and you're flying. All right. Oh. Hit a little. You overpitched it, hits the upslope. Sit down. But got again, a bit aggressive through the well, strike no, but that's there. the first thing you're going to do, isn't it? Yeah. If you get a little bit nervous, you're not going to do so. You're always going to try and hit it that bit harder. Fairly straight. Just left to right in the middle, probably about a foot left, I'd say. Right, come on. Can still make birdie. I'll start with my birdie, and then, uh, and then I can relax after that. Gotta go, gotta go a little. It's coming. Oh. You know what, Taps? I'll give you that. I'm very generous. Thank Seems you. I'm in my pocket. I'll give you that one. Are you flag? Are you flag in or flag out? Um, to be honest, I'm a flag out man. It could be more of a hindrance. Yes. You know, a bit I, distracting. Well, is it? For me, I know. I know this shouldn't. It, almost for me, it makes the hole look smaller. Not as a visual point of view. Right. But again, I see it as a. If a putt's going to go in at the correct pace, it's going to go in regardless of the flag's not there. I think the only time the flag can help you is when you've overhit it. But, you, but for me, I'm never trying to hit a foot putt more than a foot by, so... Yeah. And again, as well, I've seen a few of them happen now where they're going in at a nice pace and it wedges the flag in the hole and it just comes out to the side. So Have you seen all, it that bit? Yeah, a couple of times. So right. 176. 176, wind out of the right, right here. Um, Again, pins at the back here, so I'd say whatever you're thinking, probably want to keep it just a bit short, because short long, long, long's not great. So either. hit it 170-ish, that sort of thing. Well, you, you're clearly that good after the last <laughs> time. I'm quite impressed already. <laughs> right, um, so, so whatever, 
The greens are still quite firmer, so you probably want it pitching out to your mid-60s because it's probably going to release five. OK. And for you, that's a... Uh, I'm in between sort of a... I'm thinking a chippy seven or a hard eight. All right, show us how it's done then, Pro. Are you going to go with the seven? <sighs> I actually think I am, yeah. But... Oh, it's not me anyway. I'm one down. <laughs> that's a good point. is just on fire. Tell you what, if that's up, we could be having a hole in one. <laughs> yes, come on. Yes, I like these G410 irons, Dominic. <laughs> I think this has got long written all over it, but I'm gonna, I'm under pressure now. I'm gonna you have are. to go for it. I've really put the squeeze on now. It's what I'm famous for, not. Oh, he's pulled it again. Oh no, that's long and left. Oh no. Oh, that is. It is long and left. Right. That is not where you want to be. One thing I wanted to ask you about was swing thoughts. Right, I, I can get into a point where I've got three or four flying around my head, and I know that when I play my best, I probably have one. Yeah. What's your take on swing thoughts? Um, you know, I think I, I always try and put my swing thoughts in my routine. And then, yeah, yeah. and then once I'm over the ball, it's just about trying to hit the shot that I've pictured or talked okay. about with my caddy before, really. Yeah. Um, I think you can get, you know, a lot of guys can get bogged down with it and, and it becomes like so ingrained, that's all you're thinking about and you sort of forget to play the shot or the, you know what I mean? I prefer, you know, you're doing it back here, you're doing your feel that you need to feel like in your swing or the shot you're going to hit and then you're into the shot and that's all you should be thinking about is the way you're going to start it and what shape you're going to hit with it. Okay. So, do, do, Have you had the same swing, thought, swing thoughts all the way through your career or do they change a bit? No, or? I mean, they change, I think, but I think, you know, me, me and Jamie Goff, uh, who I work with, you know, we have, you know, four or five different things, but it's all working towards the same, same area. What, what's a good piece of advice then for amateurs on, on swing thoughts? For, for those again, people like I, me that can have yeah, four or five, again, I, put it in your routine. Put it in your routine, put it in your practice swings when you're behind, and then as soon as you're, into that, as soon as you're over the ball, or just before you go into the shot, you go, right, that's the shot I'm seeing, I'm going to hit that shot, and regardless of your swing thought, you've done all your prep, but it's like, I'd, I'd say it's like building a house. You're putting your foundations in back here, of doing your little prep work, your little bits there, and then soon as you soon as you're here, you're laying bricks. Right. Okay. Do you know what I mean? You, yeah. you go out there and you're putting the building into into place. Yeah. So that's how I'd look at it. Uh, okay. I've not got a lot of green to work with here. I've probably got four or five yards of green to work with, but I've got a little upslope, a fringe there that I could just bump it in to try and take a bit of the uh, bit of the sting out of. So I've got a 60. I'm just going to get the toe in the ground, shaft up a little bit, just to guarantee the strike. And I'm just going to try and land it that upslope. But again. If you see just before it's a little downslope, so yeah. if I do get it slightly wrong, comes up short, still should go forward. Get a little kick forward. Which is where you chip in, I'd say again there, is give yourself a leeway. Like I said to you on the last hole, you had like about a 30 yard leeway where you could pitch it in. You know, that all, that'll take the pressure off you again though, if you think, well, I've got quite a lot of leeway here. Where here, again, if I'm a little aggressive, I can hit it in the upslope. If it's not quite, it's going to hit that downslope and still release out. So you're giving yourself in your mind a, a little, bit, a of little bit of a leeway, a little bit of a buffer almost, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? So, so, okay, fine. Toe in the ground a little bit, try and guarantee the strike. I'm just going to try and land it on that little bit of fringe. Perfect. Golf shot. But all that is, is just toe in the ground. It's just get, taking the heel out of play, taking almost the duff out of the equation and just getting your strike on it. I'm not trying to spin that. I'm not trying to put any Hollywood or Disneyland on that. It's just land it in a spot and let it release, let it out. release out. And I think that's where chipping, where with amateurs, is they want to play their spinner all the time, but really it's so difficult to play. You only have to, I'd only say, use that shot when you have to. We see you boys playing it all the time on tour, though. That's but, you've my got to remember, but you've got to remember, is when we're on tour, generally the flags are tighter, we're going at flags, we're short siding ourselves a lot more, so you're having to play that shot a little right, bit more. Right, okay. So it's more, you are trying to play that high tariff shot. You know, if we are, you know, if we're front of the green, it's probably a bad shot, so you, you would see the bumper and all the putter come out yeah. in that instant. So it, for me there, I'd want to get it on the ground as soon as possible, try and hold it. Yeah, good shot. Very Thank good. Thank you. I'm, I'm having that one no. I think if anything, it might want to go just a little to the right, if oh, I'm right. honest. Right, okay, fine. But right. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't give the hole away. Okay. Or if you want to just stay one up, I'd, I'd say outside the left. Outside left. Yeah. I can do that. <laughs> There you go. Oh, 
Good putt, though. So Lovely putt. Okay. Lovely putt. To well, be honest, mate, I'm, I'm just wondering what your, your tea time is next week on tour after yeah, the last me two too, holes. Me too. <laughs> I need to get in touch with Keith Pelly. Guys, thank you very much for watching. This is the end of part one. Um, keep your eyes peeled for the second part where I'll be speaking to Andy uh, a little bit more about some of the other things that he thinks about to get his golf ball around the golf course in the fewest shots possible. Uh, hit the subscribe button to make sure you don't miss any of our videos. Hit the like button if you like what you've seen. Uh, but for now, from Stratford-upon-Avon, it's goodbye. <laughs>